tonight on EKB Evening News at 6. Can Kentucky put a stop to out-of-state trash? Good evening, I'm Gary Slaw. And I'm Cindy Mae Johnson. Earlier this week, State Senator Ray Jones called on Attorney General Jack Conway to take action against the Commonwealth of Virginia for its failure to notify Kentucky residents of the Grundy sewage spill. This comes on the heels of his request to the Division of Water last week to look into ways to stop Virginia trash from flowing through rivers and streams into Kentucky. Gary sat down with Senator Jones earlier to talk about these very issues. Senator Jones, let's talk about the pollution coming in from Virginia into Kentucky. Now, this has been an ongoing situation for quite some time, but it's been exasperated lately. Well, it's my understanding that beginning in early March that a uh, storm-related uh, problem uh, caused the spill of about 118 million gallons of raw sewage into the Leviza Fork. Of course, that uh, flows directly into Fish Trap Lake. And uh, Kentucky's uh, environmental uh, enforcement uh, officials were not advised of that until sometime around May 13th. Um, now the steps are starting to be taken now? I know you're calling for, for steps to be taken. Well, I am. I'm, we're, we're trying to put a meeting together on, on July 30th here in Pikeville with representatives from state government, federal government, hopefully county government. And it, it's time that, you know, first and foremost, we need a system put in place that if this ever happens again, that uh, a way to make sure that Virginia officials notify Kentucky officials. Second, if there has been damage done in Kentucky, the people responsible need to be held accountable for that. Now, how does this spill go for such a long period of time and no one um, finds out about it? And it raises the issue of where the EPA is. I mean, we've seen what the EPA has done to the coal industry under the guise of the Clean Water Act. The EPA needs to be held accountable. They need to explain why this could happen uh, and not take action under the Clean Water Act. Well, I know that's something that's uh, been discussed quite extensively. And one more question. Uh, how can we enforce this on Virginia? If, if, if there's some laws made and some regulations put in place, how can the state of Kentucky enforce it on the state of Virginia? Well, well, well first and foremost, uh, there are regulations, there are federal regulations that deal with with water pollution, we, the, the Clean Water Act. Right. The easiest way would be if the federal government would, would act to address the situation. And it's not just a pollution issue from, from discharge, but go and look at the trash problem that we have had. One of the other issues that I hope to address in this meeting is the perpetual trash problem that we've had at Fish Trap. And it's not acceptable. The, the lake could be a significant tool for economic development and tourism development. and it's not, it's not, we can't use it for that purpose because of the trash problem. And that meeting once again is gonna be held? July 30th. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. In Floyd County's Southern Water and Sewer District is seeking state approval to make improvements to their system. The utility proposes to replace the main water transmission line between Allen and Martin. That line has experienced numerous breaks in recent years that have caused outages and led to extensive water loss. Southern also plans to upgrade its water treatment plant at Allen. The upgrades will be funded through a $1.7 million loan and a $1.4 million grant, both from USDA Rural Development. As a result, USDA is calling for the utility to raise rates to repay the loan. That will mean an average increase of 4% on water bills. Former State Representative W. Keith Hall is asking a judge to throw out his federal bribery conviction and grant him a new trial. Hall was convicted last month of paying a former mine inspector to overlook violations at Hall's mines. In a motion filed yesterday in U.S. District Court in Pikeville, Hall argues that an outburst made by his estranged wife during her testimony tainted the jury and was the, quote, nail in the coffin, end quote, for his defense. During her testimony, Stephanie Hall was asked about a check, a consulting firm connected to the mine. She admitted signing the check, but she said she did not know what it was for. She further said Hall told her it was for consulting. Stephanie Hall then made a statement on her own accord 
that she had seen other payments for consulting in the past, but in her opinion, they were, quote, under the table kickbacks, end quote. Hall's attorneys asked for a mistrial afterwards, but the judge instead told the jury to disregard her statement. Hall now argues that direction was not enough. In the motion for a new trial, Stephanie Hall's testimony is described as, quote, a blatant effort to drive a stake into the heart of her husband, end quote. The motion further argues that the attempt was successful and poisoned the jury against Hall. The Kentucky Council on Post-Secondary Education will hold a town hall meeting in Pikeville next week. Input will be gathered on a five-year plan to guide the state's higher and adult education systems. Council President Bob King says the meetings are to find ways to improve access and increase workforce skills to grow the economy. The meeting will take place from 6 to 8 Wednesday in room 125 of the Community Technology Center on the University of Pikeville campus. Coming up, if you're like most of us, you're looking for something to do this weekend. We've got a list for you to choose from. And in the latest installment of Outdoor Adventure, Ronnie and Charles takes us for a ride along the ridge of Pine Mountain. We'll be right back. The simple act of walking can help treat many different ailments. Walking has been shown to reduce body fat, lower blood pressure, and improve cardiovascular health. At the Martin Ball Fields yesterday, St. Joseph Martin Hospital put walking to work during the Walk with a Doc event. Participants met at the Martin Ball Fields to walk with the hospital doctors. The event was designed to let participants be physically active while also getting a chance to seek health advice from professionals. Rain limited the number of participants, but the event still went on. Encourage fitness and encourage a little bit of exercise, and also at the same time uh, give a, a little brief talk on a health-related topic, with the opportunity to um, informally ask questions of whichever doctor is giving the talk. Organizers say that Walk with a Doc is just one of many events they have planned to reach out to the community. Well, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, many people are, there's plenty going on in the area. Two big events are planned for tonight and tomorrow in Kentucky and Virginia. In Pikeville, Muscle on Main kicks off with a block party and burnout contest tonight, followed by a full day of activities tomorrow, including a car show, cruise in, and drag race. Over in Wise, the Chillin' and Grillin' in the Glades Barbecue and Music Festival kicks off with a slate of concerts tonight, followed by a barbecue contest. In Prestonsburg, Kentucky native singer and songwriter Chris Stapleton will be in concert at the Mountain Arts Center tonight and tomorrow night. Breaks Interstate Park will host the McClure River Car Show Saturday night. And in Norton, Appleseed is hosting Appalachian Green to Gold, a free workshop on growing and marketing ginseng and other herbs. And speaking of growing, area farmers markets will be open as usual tomorrow. The Pikeville Farmers Market will be open from 9 to 1. Tomorrow, the market will feature zucchini recipe demonstrations from the Pike County Extension Office. In Prestonsburg, the Floyd County Farmers Market will host its first monthly Crafts Day from 9 till 2. And the Williamson Farmers Market will be open 8 till 4. In tonight's installment of our continuing series, Outdoor Adventure videographers Ronnie Hilton and Charles Mims took a break from their usual heart racing adventures. Instead, they take us on a more low-key trip anyone can take by car. However, the ride along the Little Shepherd Trail does not sacrifice any of the breathtaking scenery we've come to expect from their travels. This week, we took a drive to Letcher County to take a ride along the Little Shepherd Trail. The trail begins off US 119 at the top of Pine Mountain near Whitesburg. The section we traveled on is nearly 14 miles long and will take you to Kingdom Come State Park in Harlan County. The road is narrow but paved and takes you along the crest of Pine Mountain. While we weren't able to see any, black bears are known to be seen frequently along the Little Shepherd. The road twists and turns along the top of the ridge, taking you through dense forests. Rocky outcrops, known as hogbacks, protrude from the ridges and rhododendron and mountain laurel blanket a large majority of the forest.
Admire the views, but be cautious. There are no guardrails along the Little Shepherd, and there are quite a few steep drop-offs adjacent to the road. As you approach Kingdom Come State Park, you will come to a series of overlooks that offer stunning mountaintop views of Eastern Kentucky. While most of our outdoor adventures have required strenuous hiking and paddling, the Little Shepherd Trail can be enjoyed by everyone. Each overlook features easy access and the drive down the trail itself is quite relaxing. Take your time and enjoy what is possibly the most scenic 14 miles of roadway in eastern Kentucky. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Ronnie Hilton. What views. Oh, beautiful. Just incredible. <laughs> Coming up, NASCAR comes back to Kentucky this weekend. Joe Kinzer will be in to talk about it. But first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will tell us if the weather will interfere with weekend activities. We'll be right back. All right, it may not have been this way throughout our whole coverage area, right. but today here was glorious. Yes, so far, so good. Prestonsburg, Pikeville wise, but the farther north you go toward the Mountain Parkway and even up toward Interstate 64, numerous trees down, power out for a lot of folks. So we dodged a bullet so far. Doppler radar showing right now we are nice and quiet across eastern Kentucky western West Virginia and southwest Virginia, but when we broaden the picture with the satellite and radar composite, you'll see several showers and thunderstorms ongoing across uh, central parts of Kentucky, from Lexington to Louisville to Bowling Green. This is what we will have to watch as we make our way through the rest of this evening and into the overnight hours tonight. Now, we did have that severe thunderstorm watch that was in effect for all of the region at 6 o'clock. So that was allowed to expire, so that's good news. These storms, as they make their way to the east, have been trying to uh, fizzle out somewhat. So I don't think we'll see anything in the way of any severe weather tonight, but we still could have a uh, heavy downpour or two. This is all along this front that will be moving through the region during the overnight hours. And again, you'll see some of these lines setting up. It's what we call training. The storms just repeating over the same areas over and over and over again. For that reason, we do have a flash flood watch that is in effect for western West Virginia, southwest Virginia through early tomorrow morning and for eastern Kentucky that is set to expire at 8 o'clock this evening. Temperature wise, well, it all depends on location. Rain cooled 75 in Paintsville, but 85 in Pikeville, 81 Dorton, 85 in Williamson, 82 in Logan, 86 in Grundy. Official high today at the National Weather Service office in Jackson, 86 degrees, the low 68. Though we're close to the record of 96 and 59 to pick up about a quarter of an inch of precipitation at the National Weather Service office in Jackson today. That puts us about 1.74 inches of rain above average for the month and about eight and a half inches of rain for the year. Sunrise 617 tomorrow morning and sunset as the days are now getting shorter at 853. Temperatures tonight back into the mid and upper 60s. Highs tomorrow will be back in the mid and upper 80s. But notice those 90s very, very close. And as we make our way into the day on Sunday, you'll see some of those start to uh, move right across parts of central and even eastern Kentucky. So we will flirt with the 90 degree reading, I think, on Sunday and then again on Monday. Pollen Count Time sponsored by Faith Pharmacy, Adams Plaza in Pikeville. 3.5 on Saturday, 3.4 on Sunday, 2.7 on Monday, dropping a little on Monday. Why is that? That's when the better chance of rain will move into the region. 30% chance for tomorrow, maybe a quick afternoon shower or a thunderstorm. Then I think the better chance of rain will move in Sunday night, last through Monday, Tuesday, and even into Wednesday. Again, we could see some severe weather. We could be dealing with some flash flooding temperatures in the mid and upper 80s and then maybe back near 90 degrees by the end of next week. So 
It's feeling a little more like summer. The heat, the humidity will be around all weekend long. I, I'm excited about tomorrow with all those activities that you listed, you know, yes. earlier. Yeah, it's going to be a nice day tomorrow. And that rain chance, only a 30%, not too bad. And, of course, you can catch uh, the uh, latest forecast in tomorrow's Appalachian News Express and Mingo Messenger. Okay. That's handy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lathan. We'll be right back with sports. Well, Joe, NASCAR is back in Kentucky. For the sixth consecutive year. Thanks a lot, Gary and Sandy. And good evening, everyone. Kentucky is known for racing, whether it be horse racing or NASCAR. Last night during the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, Matt Crafton takes the win as the defending champion. But take a look at this incident that involved Ben Kennedy with five laps remaining. Kennedy's vehicle was accidentally pit maneuvered while on the inside of the track. Kennedy then proceeded to rotate 360 and went up into the catch fence. Take a look again as he got uh, again bumped from behind. His uh, truck goes up into the catch fence and taking a wild ride on top of the safety barrier. Kentucky Motor Speedway will host the Quaker State 400 tomorrow evening at 730. Kevin Harvick is leading the 2015 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with 656 points. So far, 10 drivers qualified for the chase for the cup. With time running out, Kyle Busch needs to string together a series of good races to be able to be in the running for the chase for the cup. Maybe this will be his race. Qualifying was rained out earlier today. Kyle Larson will be on the pole based on practice time results. Now NASCAR has implemented some rule changes for this year. There is a rear spoiler reduction from six to three and a half inches in height radiator pan reduction from 38 to 25 inches in width, and a front splitter reduction from two inches to a quarter inches overhang. Now these changes are going to affect the handling and reduce the downforce on the cars by lowering the speed by 10 miles per hour. Some experts are saying that the Reds are one loss closer to a fire sale as they dropped a 2-0 decision to the Miami Marlins. Walt Jockety will have some tough decisions to make over the next two weeks on who he will keep or dangle as trade baits. The Reds pick back up this evening at 7:10 for the second game of the series. Coverage can be heard on 98-1 Hit City USA. In Kentucky, they are now exactly six weeks until the football season kicks off. The dead period ended yesterday, allowing fall sports to begin preparation. Football can now begin practice today, but use helmets only. Starting August 1, they will be able to use full gear. Now, July 15th is the first day that volleyball, soccer, cross country, and cheerleading can begin according to the KHSAA. The 2000, or excuse me, the NCAA has officially ended a 15 year ban on South Carolina hosting sanctioned championship events following the decision to remove the Confederate flag from the state's capital. Due to the fact that the Confederate flag was considered a symbol of racism, and this just in, as of earlier today, Sean Hager has accepted the head baseball coaching position at Prestonsburg High School. He will also serve as an assistant basketball and football coach. Hager was the head football coach at Sheldon Clark High School and also served as the baseball coach. And Gary and Cindy, the results are just in, and bad news for Reds fans. He just continues to get, you know, to improve. And yet you grin yeah. when you say this. Well, Carlos Martinez, right-handed pitcher for St. Louis 10-game winner, he edged out Johnny Cueto for the final position, fan vote in the National League All-Star game coming up next week. Oh, I want to thank you for using one of my favorite sports names tonight. Which one's that? Jockety. Yeah. yeah. I like that name. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Well, Ethan, a chance for some showers still tonight? Showers and thunderstorms will remain in the forecast through tonight, but starting to look a little better for the weekend. Saturday, only a 30% chance of rain. Temperatures 85 degrees, 86 into the mid and upper 80s on Sunday. And, well, that's pretty much where we stay. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Best chance of rain Monday through Wednesday of next week. And some of those storms may again be on the strong side. Mm. 
something again, to watch you say. again yeah. and again and again. Well, speaking <laughs> of watching things again, classic music videos are fun to watch. Cindy, the weekend is here. If you want to unwind and get down and boogie in the privacy of your own home or not, <laughs> it's Ted Meadows and Full Throttle Videos coming up tonight at 7 o'clock. I love those things. <laughs> Very good. That will do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and Twitter. We leave you tonight with an up-close look at butterflies. Good night. Thanks for watching.